calling the filibuster racist. It's like calling farming racist because <laughs> slaves in the past have worked on farms and mm. plantations. It's yeah. absurd. We, we move past these time periods where certain things have been used for you know egregious practices. We, mm-hmm. we don't live in a time where we're using the filibuster to protest right. civil rights on, on the right. Senate floor. It just mm-hmm. doesn't happen. Yeah, watch that guy try to run free. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? It, it, it's just, run. it doesn't happen. The longest filibuster speech ever was given by former Democratic Senator Strom Thurmond oh, of South Strom. Carolina, <laughs> who spoke for 24 hours and 18 minutes against the Civil Rights Act mm-hmm. of 1957. Mm-hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, President Joe Biden described the senator as one of his closest friends. Mm-hmm. Um, Another friend of the president, we have the late Democratic Senator Robert Byrd, who... Oh, yes. 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 Late of the KKK. Yes, yes. Yeah. a confirmed member of yeah. the KKK before he supposedly disavowed them. Um, yes, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> he he, gave, he thought, he thought they sold cookies. He thought that was the organization. He thought KKK stood for cookie, cookie, cookie. <laughs> and so when he found out what they were really for, he was shocked. He Absolutely was shocked. appalled. He thought it was all about cookies. <laughs> So he gave. He also didn't know how to spell cookies. No, he, no, he didn't. It's always he a Democrat. Yeah. Well, yeah. Again, whatever. stupid. Yeah, stupid. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> stupid. Well, you know, whatever. So he gave an exceptionally long speech of 14 hours and 13 minutes to protest, again, the Civil Rights Act, but this time of 1964. Mm. And he ended up dying in 2010, and Biden delivered a lengthy eulogy oh, at his funeral. Yes. So I just thought that this was a very interesting claim from a Democratic senator of a practice that has been used by Democrats very, very much in the past. And so is there any weight at all to Elizabeth Warren's claim that this practice is racist? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Is there any, you know... uh, I'll answer that this way. If there is any weight to that claim... Uh, then the then the party guilty of that has been the Democrats. Mm. Uh, the I, I think I personally think that the left, the Democrats, are crazy to try to do away with the filibuster because yeah. what that will mean is that uh, people who, in the minority who are seeking to keep uh, these bills from being enacted will have to actually filibuster, right? They'll have to actually stand on the floor and mm-hmm. and speak for 24 hours for however long that they can to keep that from happening. What that means is that these bills will actually be read out loud, just like with the COVID-19 bill, our yeah. $1.9 trillion fiasco. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is a disaster for politicians, for career politicians. It's a disaster for the left, for Democrats. They do not want you to know what's in these bills. Yeah. Nope. And in a 24-hour news cycle with 24-hour uh, news coverage and mm-hmm. cameras on in the Senate all day long, C-SPAN will cover every word of that stuff mm-hmm. and all of the stuff that, that Nancy Pelosi literally didn't want you to know was in Obamacare. And she told you, you you'll find out what's in the bell after we pass it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Literally what she said. Yeah. Actually, I think she said, we'll find out. Probably, yeah. I literally believe that. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know either. <laughs> just I, I, I'd have to go back and look. But I literally, <laughs> that's what I recall her saying. Uh, she doesn't want you to know what's in the bill. Democrats no. don't want you to no. know what's in the bill. And so I think this is actually a really, really bad move yeah. on the part of Elizabeth Warren and and other people who are making these recommendations. I think it's gonna. I think it's going to make it actually harder for them to uh, to put this get this stuff through. Mm-hmm. I think calling the filibuster racist, it's like calling farming racist because <laughs> slaves in the past have worked on farms and mm. plantations. It's yeah. absurd. We, we move past these time periods where certain things have been used for you know egregious practices. We, mm-hmm. we don't live in a time where we're using the filibuster to protest right. civil rights on, on right. the Senate floor. It just mm-hmm. doesn't happen. Yeah, watch that guy try to run free. Yeah, election. exactly. Right? It, it, it's just, run. it doesn't happen. So you have to look at the times we're living in now. You, That's a really good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other thing, the Senate exists to protect minority rights in this country, the rights of the minority. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a House, and because of the House being you know based on population, it doesn't need a, a filibuster style thing. Right. That's why they don't yeah, have it. Yeah, it's why they don't have it. And so it is critically important. But I, I think this this sets up too 
the chance where Democrats want to change the Senate to proportional representation of course. to mm-hmm. be elected. Yeah. And I think this is a preview of that. Get rid of the filibuster and then set the Senate up to be a proportional representation. And then you basically have a second House of Representatives where mm-hmm. the minority party has zero rights. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think, George, your point is fantastic about you know, how important the filibuster is because it forces – these politicians to expose what's what's in their bills, and they, they right. don't want that. Don't they're, want they're, that. they're scared of it. Mm-hmm. You know, Obamacare being jammed through is part of why Democrats lost the House after Obamacare was rammed through. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so I actually think it's it's political could be political suicide for them if they yeah. abolish the filibuster. Mm-hmm. They jam through bills like HR one without anything being read on it, yeah. and then Americans find out later all these horrifying parts of the bill. So mm-hmm. be it for me yeah. to get in the way of Democrats committing political suicide. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a, right. Well, so what do you do? You say, do they abolish? No, we shouldn't abolish it. But still, <laughs> yeah, you got to weigh it, right? A little bit, yes. a little bit of me, though. It's like, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. maybe. Yeah. Well, so just a little bit. Yeah, cool. no, definitely excellent points. And kind of moving away from the side of what it's going to do to their party and more yeah. of along the lines of why this why she made this comment in the first place you know Mm. and so i kind of wanted to talk about why this has become such why this has become the automatic response in american society today when if we don't like something we can point at it and say that's racist or that's homophobic or that's bigoted and so i just wanted to kind of ask you guys where where do you think this has come from and you know how do we kind of overcome this mindset moving forward Oh, it's na- all it is is name calling. That's mm. that's all it is. It is yeah. um, it is the people with the emotional maturity of sixteen year olds uh, populating the the Senate and the House. Mm-hmm. And if I call you, if I don't like your idea, and I say, well, you're a bigot, I've done two things. One, I've changed the argument. So now we're not talking about the sub subject anymore. The 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 mm-hmm. object of of debate. Mm-hmm. We've cut off debate. Now we're talking about you. Yeah. Okay. And if you try to get off of that and get back to the topic, you are, well, you clearly don't want to talk about Mm -hmm. how bigoted and homophobic you are. Yeah. Uh, So you're essentially admitting it. Okay. You know, do you still beat your husband, Deborah? What, you know, it's, it's that kind of question. There's no good answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I don't still do it. Oh, but you did. I mean, that's where you get. It's, Mm -hmm. it's the only place to go. So, um, there, I've said this a lot, and I and I continue to hold out hope for it, although uh, I cannot claim to be rational in doing so. But what what U.S. politics needs, particularly in the Senate, the House has always been kind of madcap, but particularly in the Senate, we need debate. We need civil yeah. discourse. Mm-hmm. We need people who can sit down and talk logically and think critically. Mm-hmm. about the actual issues without having to resort to straw mans. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Without yeah. straw man argument, without um without ad hominem attacks, mm-hmm. without all of that kind of stuff. It's we have some people in the Senate still capable of that. Ted Cruz who we yeah. saw earlier is one of them. Um uh, actually an excellent debater. Uh, uh Rand Paul would be yeah. another excellent uh candidate for that. I cannot think of, of anybody on the other side of the aisle who I would hold up as an example of being really capable of that, but I freely admit to the possibility of it. And those folks need to get together mm-hmm. and figure out how we move on from this crazy, you know, screaming match we're constantly in, yeah. uh, and back to civil political discourse. I, I don't know the path for it, but I continue right. to hold out hope that we can get there. Mm-hmm. I think calling someone racist is unfortunately a really easy thing to do. It's, right. a, it's a cop out, it's essentially. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've always, you guys have heard the saying, you know, you call someone crazy and they say, I'm not crazy. And you're like, well, that's what a crazy person would say. (laughs) So when someone calls you racist, I'm not a racist. That's what a racist would say. When you have to start defending yourself, saying you're not something, the other side can say, oh, no, they're, they are that. Look how hard they're defending themselves. Yeah, because they're defending themselves so much. And so There's they, no it's, real good answer. To no, it, yeah, it's it's very tactical. But I, I think George, you had a great point. The point of it That's is the second time you said that. Uh, well, it just how excellent my points are. Are you paying attention? Uh, yes, okay, I'm taking good. notes. Good. All right, that's excellent. I want to keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, well, as soon as I remember your name, I'll, uh, we can just look into that. They want to take the focus 
off of what's really at hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if they're, if they're debating something like HR one and they all of a sudden turn it and say, Republicans are racist for not supporting this bill. Well, now the conversation is no longer about the bill. It's about how Republicans are racist. Yeah. And the debate becomes name calling and it's not debate. Racist acts. It's, it's not debate. You're right. It's, it's mm-hmm. like you said, it's like 16 year olds arguing. Yeah. It, look, yeah. Yeah. 16 is kind of a compliment. And so we've reached this really problematic point in political culture where Democrats resort to race. And I don't think Republicans have really come up with a good way to counter that. Yeah. How do we counter that? I don't really know. We always say, you know, truth and facts are how we counter the left, but it's really hard for whatever reason to defend yourself against these racism accusations. Right. Well, so, yeah, it's, it's a hard place to be in. <laughs>